최고 Alright, today's a bit of a sad day but a little bit exciting as well I'm retiring the old tinny and um, the guys down here at Phoenix Power Sports have done me a solid deal on this new Stacer Outlaw 429 I've had a couple of Stacers and yeah this would be my third one I've had a good run in them so I thought why not come and see these guys and yeah they've really looked after me they're looking after local guys so come down and check them out if you're looking for a tinny and um, speak to the boys but yeah it's pretty keen to get this thing out on the water G'day guys and welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to run you through my new boat. So a few of you would have noticed if you follow me on Instagram and stuff that I actually have a new vessel. I've gone for a 429 Stacer Outlaw. So I've had two other Stacers before this one and I've had a good run out of both of them. Pretty impressed so I've um, gone for the Stacer again. I went around to a few of the different uh, boat dealers in Mackay here, had a little look at the Quintrex and CJs, even went and had a look at Svensson and um, saw some really nice boats, but just the guys at Phoenix Power Sports were awesome to deal with, really knowledgeable and helpful, and they've also cut me an awesome deal. So I definitely recommend if you're local, head down, have a look and check out their Stacer Outlaws. They're a bloody awesome boat. I've had this thing on the water for a few weeks now, and it's very, very impressive. So anyway, I'm gonna run you through the boat and show you all its features and that sort of thing. So check it out. God, animals. All right, here we are, maiden voyage on the new boat. Spent the last two days with Luke. We've um, wired up all the electronics, so we've got the sounder there, and he's gone and put this switch panel in here but yeah kind of a little bit overkill but yeah it looks bloody awesome thanks Luke if you want to check him out on Instagram it's end of the line fishing Down the back here we've got a switch panel it's got the little voltmeter that and that there all the switches so i've got nav lights deck lights sounder that's the radio live bait tank and bilge so he's wired it all up beautifully if you have a look in here that's the uh that's the switch panel now i've got the nmea set up there all right fishing pond here today just bringing the boat down for a little bit more of a test run only really had it offshore once, so second run I bought Luke as a thank you. Luke did all my wiring, he's a bloody legend. So he sorted this boat out and took it from a brand new hull to a working boat. So see if we can get some fish. I'm gonna try and see if there's any sort of pelagic stuff here in the mouth. Seen a couple of bust ups, so. Oh, what's this, the big shark on me? Yeah. Big bully was chasing it man. Oh, fish on, fish on. We'll see the shark come back. Yeah. It's probably going to come back, all right. It's probably going to come back on my fish. Yeah, I'm going to cast at you. There's going to be heaps hanging off yeah. in the end. There's 
don't want to cross you. No, a little. Here they are. Oh, big bully, big bully. Get out of there, little queenie. Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get that out. Oh, here we go. Is that the shark taking you? No, I don't think so. I'm just seeing a massive bell Oh, here we go. Yeah. Is that the shark taking you? No, I don't think so. I'm just seeing a massive bell This might have been the shark going a bit deeper. <laughs> There he is, it's a good one too. Yeah. He's making mockery of them. Yeah man, he's going good. That's why I thought you were sharp. He's going hard on 20 pound tackle, bro. Oh. 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 <laughs> Happy about 110 I reckon. It's a Maria Pop Queen. <laughs> so as you can see in that bit of video, the boat's nice and really stable at rest. It's, um, it doesn't roll to the side when you've got two grown men acting like idiots in the boat on one side. So. It's uh, really nice and stable, plenty of space to easily fish two people. And um, yeah, I'm really impressed with just the fishability of this thing. Yeah, as you can see, Luke's done an awesome job with the wiring. I've got the LED strip lights up here under the gunnels. You can sort of see there, just, just enough. So if you're fishing at night or even low light periods, you can see your knots and all that sort of thing. Up the front, I've got a 55 pound Minn Kota. That thing sort of holds it. It's come off the old boat, so I didn't really even consider changing. I don't think it needs an 80 pound anyway. This whips it around nice and well. And um, I've got that connected to it's a Hummerbird Solix 12, also known as a Mickey Bird. But yeah, that's um, out of the old boat as well. It's a Gen 1, so a little bit outdated, but I find it gets the job done. I've got real no, no real need to go and spend another five grand on a sounder, so. I'm just gonna leave it until it's dead. I originally put the 40 off my old tinny on the back of here and she was, didn't take too long before we worked out that we were massively underpowered. So I've got the boat re-rated and put a 60 Yummy on the back. Uh, Rod Armstrong's his name from up in Cairns. He plated the boat for me. It was 350 bucks plus GST, so money well spent in my opinion. But yeah, basically that's the plate there. Armstrong Marine Services if you're looking for them. Um, but yeah, just re-rated it from the 50 to the 60. So I just figured that if I was going to spend the money and buy a brand new outboard, I'd rather not just go for a 50 and then, you know, maybe be disappointed or whatnot. So I just went straight up to a 60. Outboard's still really, really new. So I don't think it's even got 20 hours yet. It's pretty close, but it's not quite there. But as for speed, top speed I'm getting out of the 60 is um, at the moment, it's about 55 k's an hour. I'm top, tapping out at about 57 and a half. 5750 rpm which i think as the motor wears in and frees up a little bit i might get a little bit more but i also want to have a little bit of a play with props and that sort of thing because i do think that it should be getting a little bit more as there's a fair few guys with 50s that i've seen getting very similar figures so i'm hoping to get a little bit more out of it but that's that's just the thing with the brand new motor everything's real tight and needs to um free up and work in so Basically, we'll keep an eye on it and uh, I'll have a bit of a play as I've got a bit more time on the water with it. One of the features I'm super stoked with is this uh, revolution hull. So it's got the really sharp entry point at the front, which um, cuts through the chop really well. So one of the main reasons I was buying a new boat was my old one had just 
copped a good hiding over the years going out offshore and that sort of thing so it basically started to show some signs of age and started to get some cracks here and there and my mate sort of told me look you know I wouldn't be taking this offshore too much more otherwise you're just going to keep on fixing the cracks so basically I weighed up my options and uh, thought why not treat myself so I've got this I can take it out offshore now I'm not sort of restricted to the creeks and the dams and that sort of thing so it's been really good I've done a couple of little coastal runs like to sort of more remote creeks now and even if it's 10 to 15 knots and you're punching straight into it the the hull just pushes the water out of the way so all that short sharp chop we get in Mackay which is usually terrible to sort of navigate through you get really wet and that sort of thing this thing just cuts it out So yeah, as you can see, it's really wide, plenty of room in there to play around. There's a cast deck up the front and a few hatches there for storage. It's probably about oh, a metre to 1100 long. So if you have a look down under here, this is where I've got my uh, battery for the Minn Kota. It's um, awesome to have it nice and low and it's a perfect little spot for it. So that was a well thought out addition. I've opted for the rod locker. I'll get in and show you around that. But yeah, I just well, I had that. They had this one sitting in the boat dealer, so it was um, quite convenient, really. I um, went in, had a little look, saw the rod locker, and I was like, "Yep, that's what I need." I'm always carrying a lot of rods and just trying to be ready for whatever sort of happens. So I went with that, and uh, it was a little bit extra, but it's already sort of proven. So yeah, there's a little look inside. It's nothing flash, there's just plenty of storage there. I've carried about seven rods in there and even some bigger sort of stuff, the GT stuff for offshore. In the hatches up the front, there's plenty of room, it's awesome. I've got in this one, I've got all my safety gear, fire extinguisher there, flares, EPIRB, and foot pedal for the electric. Now, middle one here's got a big tub in it. It's pretty good, I've got my camera gear there, a few snacks a bit later. And then on this side, I've got spare fuel, just a few bits and pieces of tackle. And then up in front here, I've got my life jackets. So it does have an anchor well, comes standard. I do want to build a recessed anchor well here and just put a nice flap over it. And um, yeah, once that, once I cover it over, I'm going to do the whole boat with EVA. The carpet really stinks, so I'll get rid of that fishy smell out of my shed. I've got the Yami hooked up with the NME A2000 cable, so um, that's linked up to the Hummerbird. So as you can see here, I've got your engine revs, coolant PSI, which isn't working, uh, engine tamp, fuel, and speed. So you go into your fuel there. It gives you your total fuel, fuel percentage, how much you're burning. So liters an hour. That's really handy. Um, the distance you get with the or the range you've got with what's left in your tank and then how many hours so i haven't had a boat with this enemy a stuff before but it's already proven really handy especially being so new to the 60 horsepower i've sort of had 40 on my last one i knew how far i'd get with it and it was really good for that but uh with the 60 it's just that little bit bigger and it definitely takes a little bit more fuel so it's just handy i can keep an eye on it and always sort of know where i'm at only 25 liters for the moment but yeah, very important is a water separating filter. It's gonna cut out about 90% of your problems. So if you don't have one of them, I highly recommend getting one. So yeah, according to my NMEA, I get about 70 to 80 Ks at cruising speed, which cruising speed about 4,100 RPM is about 38, 39 Ks an hour. So I should get a fair bit of range out of it. Uh, I'm always gonna carry a Jerry. I've got that up the front. So yeah, I've mounted the sounder just up at the front of my side pocket here, and it's um seems to be like the perfect sort of spot for it. Just sort of out of your way. I've got two seat positions here, so I've got one forward where you can see I run it down there when I'm um when I'm sort of in the zone where I where I want to fish and I want to sort of be a little bit closer to the sounder, but then I can drop it back onto the to the back here. It sits up a little bit higher, but it's really good on longer runs offshore and stuff like that. So 
it's always handy to be able to be nice and close to your sounder but then closer comfortable to your with your tiller arm when you've got longer runs so yeah awesome layout some of the features that are standard with this comes with the live well and that's all plumbed in with a pump and everything not that i really use it if i do keep fish i've just been putting them in there to bleed them out so i don't get blood all through my esky and that sort of thing it's got five posts for seats which is I don't, know, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not really going to move seats around the boat um, other than my own just to sort of be able to get closer to the motor or closer to the sounder depending. But it's got the little post up the front. I can put a little um, put a little lean post there and I've got one here, one under my tackle boxes, one under my esky and then the two down the back here. So it's actually six, but we won't count. All right, as for mods, I'm probably gonna have a little bit of a play with this. I really wanna extend that cast deck. Just at the back here, you can see the screws there, they run along, so I basically wanna build up a frame. It'll come across here, and then just extend that cast deck another 40 odd centimeters. And then under here, just to back a little bit further, I've got a nice big compartment for an underfloor tank, so I reckon I'll probably get 50 or 60 liters in there, so. That's just a couple of little things I wanna get done. I'm also going to ditch this anchor well at the front. It's awesome to have an anchor well, but I'm going to uh, basically take this one out, recess it, have an open and closing flap there, and I'll um, also put some uh, EVA over the front there. So with all the flooring, it's all timber. So I'm going to pull all this out and I'm going to get some thermalite. Should be a fair bit lighter. I don't know if it's going to give me much performance difference, but we'll find out. But yeah, I'll thermalite the lot. The reason for that is that EVA is going to stick to the thermalite a lot better. So I'm going to get that done. I just can't stand carpet. It stinks. Eh? <laughs> so spend that much time on the water. I'm washing my boat every second day and there's fish hitting the deck left, right and center. So it's all that slime and scales and scum just gets stuck in your, uh, stuck in your carpet and it's really not pleasant. Should get plenty of plenty of fishing in with this like in in the offshore stuff and then even the coastal runs like if I want to shoot out and fish a different creek and creek hop up the coast or down the coast it's going to be perfect for that sort of thing. Yeah.